right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the GSL. This is the Code A round of 32, what we also call round two. I am Moltrap, with me is Kaldor, and we have already had one really exciting set of games for you, and it is just the beginning. Still have three more sets, I almost said like... <laughs> four, three, We still uh... have three more sets. <laughs> there are four lights. Um, we also have the other sets going on on Wolf Stream, by the way, if you're not watching that at the same time. You can edit your preferences on the GOM player, check the thing that says allow multiple instances, and then when you go back to the page, the live page, and click start the stream, and it asks you which stream, click the other stream. You can open up both of them, have them both on the screen at the same time, if you would like, if you want to watch the games over on his stream as well. But uh, we have three more series to show you. We're going to get started with uh, Finn versus Polt in just a moment. First, we're going to take a look at uh, one of the replays from the last series and take a look at uh, some crucial moments of this game. Oh my god, that was just so insane. And I can't believe that Alicia actually lost those two sentries. The Lynx was streaming to his main base. He didn't react in time to close the gap and therefore yeah. was occupied when the drones tried to surround his sentry. But he could have won the game right then and there. Yeah, a little bit of a lack of multitasking that we didn't get to see that on camera during the game. But in fact... Alicia could have force filled that gap and didn't. He had the sentry there specifically for that purpose, but instead the Lynx got into his main, which just made things worse. Yeah, this was quite a small misstep by Alicia. He should have won Zealot in the gap in order to uh, wall off completely. And he basically just was panicking, went to his main base, tried to defend there, and at that time forgot about the force field at the ramp and therefore just lost that opportunity to end the game against the Zera. Yep, so uh, Lucer was able to fight that off, and of course the crucial moments came later when there was a huge attack on the third with the Void Rays and lots and lots of units, including the sentries. But yeah, just mismicroed the sentries in Lucera's main, didn't force field his natural. A couple mistakes there by Alicia, and that's what allowed Lucera the little bit of leeway. That's all he needed to get a few more drones on his bases so they had enough economy to keep pumping out units when Alicia went for his big attack. And those timings of Luzira were just so, so razor thin. It's unbelievable he was really able to squeeze out just the right amount of drones so that he could have fought all those units that he needed later on to defend against that push by Alicia. And Alicia, while wow, he had such a strong army, I yeah. wouldn't have thought it possible that Luzira would actually defend against that. Oh, I just I just noticed now Luzira even put down a macro hatchery in his natural while he was waiting for this attack to happen, so he was very well prepared. Yeah, a lot of spine crawlers. I like the decision by Alicia, by the way, to go and attack in this small choke. Instead of attacking the wide natural where there was plenty of space for Lyritzira to get a concave, instead he said, all right, I'm gonna actually going to break down the rocks so I can do four force fields and keep your whole army at bay. And there's that fight with the Guardian Shield and everything and Alicia dealing a lot of damage. She looked occasionally a little bit timid. You should maybe try to uh, uh, push a little bit harder but waited for the next warp in round. And now once again the force field. I mean look at that retreating. He didn't have the Observer with him. The Observer was a little bit too late in order to help him in this fight. Yeah, well you don't see Zergs get Tunneling Claws that quickly so maybe he wasn't expecting to need an Observer until later on and this is where yeah Lucira at this point I thought Lucira was dead because he only has a handful of roaches left yeah look at the control of the of the void race by the way he already lost one to that spore crawler and that shouldn't have happened in the first place he loses yeah. the second void ray as well later on to the queen so with a little bit better control for his void race with maybe two uh, groups for his army instead of only one he should have been able to deal a lot more damage with the void race keep them alive a little bit longer and deal yeah. with that situation that's a really good point because like we just saw there he was letting the queens hit his void rays and he'd fallen them back or snipe the queens and that was the moment there where he waited for another 10 seconds and Lucira got twice as many roaches and that was what he needed. At that time uh, Lucira is way ahead in supply and look at those queens taking out void ray number two and three and that shouldn't have happened with two control groups I guess especially in the fight before this one he would have been able to deal a lot more damage maybe even take the queens out at some point and uh, then there would have been no anti-air for, uh, for Lucira but at that point Lucira is just too strong and taking down everything. Yep and uh, actually right over here we have Lucira's coach the I am coach congratulating him. He's heading out victorious out of the building. And that means pretty soon we're going to get started. Of course, because we have the two streams going on, 
normally we have four booths here, and uh, normally we have you know the next couple players set up in the other two booths so that we can move through the matches. But because we have two streams, we actually have to wait for the players to get their settings set up in the booths, brand new. So there it is. That is OGS Finn. And he is, as uh, I mentioned last week in the, uh, the cast of him, or maybe it was the previous week, formerly known as 4GG, a uh, championship, a champion winning, what am I, what am I trying to say? <laughs> he, he won a tournament <laughs> in Brood War, is what I'm trying to say. Except I no speak good for a minute. Uh, and he is now in Code A on his first attempt to ode Enes Hosa Sage in the first round, but I think his opponent this round is going to be much more important and uh, much more. Go ahead, Keldor, you talk. <laughs> I can't right now. Yeah, his opponent is probably a little bit stronger. It is none other than Polt, and Polt has a 53% win quota. In TVT, he played 86 games, won 46 of them. And the last matches in uh, TVP, uh, TVT were actually against Turok, which is a Russian Terran player. Paul was participating in one of the European online tournaments, and I'm quite impressed that a lot of Korean players lately decided to play tournaments, online tournaments on the European server. And they did really, really well, despite the lag, despite the latency to the European server, they do quite well. And Paul was able to win the yeah. tournament. He encountered Turok and won a 2 1 against him. And no. he. Go on. Sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I just have a couple of more results, but nothing too special. Let's uh, put it in a nutshell. Polt is really good. <laughs> yeah, well, I was just going to mention what we see on screen here. This is why Polt is here in Code A. He actually won his first game against Lenok and then lost to Ganji and lost to Lenok. Can you imagine how things would have been different this season if Polt had won that third game against Lenok? But instead, Polt is down here in Code A and Lucira, I'm sorry, Lenok. Uh, has gone on to a little bit bigger and better things. I think I would have hated it if Lenog wouldn't have been able to play that series yesterday <laughs> against MVP. This was oh, yeah. by far, by far the best stack of two series I've ever seen in my whole life. Ladies and gentlemen, if you didn't watch that Code Summer final between Lenog and MVP, make sure to catch those VODs. This was just... I actually lack the words to describe it. Yeah, it was just completely amazing. Best series of the tournament. Go watch those, definitely. But Finn versus Polt is about to begin on Daybreak. We're going to find out if the Brood War Pro can take on the StarCraft II champion here at the GSL. And up here at the top right, we have a champion, but not yet in StarCraft II. Formerly known as 4GG. Ogis P. Also formerly known as Never. He was Never V because he was on the uh, V Clan. Which I think stands for victory, but I could be wrong. And at the bottom left in blue, we have his opponent, another Terran player. And this is. GSL Holt. Holt, of course, having won the GSL Super Tournament. So we have a one-time Brood War Champion versus a one-time StarCraft II Champion. This should be interesting. And most people think that Polt is going to win the match. I have to admit, the first thing that came to my mind when I just saw that shot of Polt was, oh my god, that guy looks so smart. <laughs> <laughs> I, do, I don't know why, it doesn't make any sense at all. But that was the first thing that I thought when they is, just showed is him. Is it the glasses? <laughs> Maybe, but a lot of them have glasses, and it's just or like... Gigi has glasses, too. Yeah, I don't know. It's just his posture, I guess. It's posture, he has a smart posture. Yeah, it's a little bit like an academic, you know? Yeah, well, actually, we have a we have a smart playing later today, not this match. JYP's old nickname was Smart. He's going to be in the next set. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Wordplay incoming. <laughs> there you go. Um... Anyway, so we do have both players just going for one barracks. Finn has gone ahead and hidden his a little bit off to the side. I'm sorry, Polt has a little bit off to the side. No particular reason for that. It just makes it a little bit more difficult to scout. But while things are heating up here, it looks like we're going to have quick, quick expansions from both players. I want to mention a little bit about Finn, a.k.a. 4GG. If you didn't catch my 
uh, or cast of him uh, in the round of 48. Um, he, I just want to give a little background information. He was very, very strong timing attack style Terran player in Brood War. That's what he was known for. In fact, his nickname in Brood War was the Time Attacker because that's what he did most of the time was go for these very, very um, effective timing attacks. And he actually beat the best players in Brood War, but towards the end of his career, he became mediocre again. He, he didn't really, he kind of fell out of practice. So I'm curious to see, he's been doing very well in StarCraft 2. We haven't seen too many matches out of him yet, but so far in his matches against Sage last week, we saw the same kind of style. We saw him do very effective timing attacks and very good macro and mechanics kind of supporting him. So it's kind of what he has going for him. Didn't you also mention that he disappeared from the grid for quite a while and then uh, came back? Uh, I kind of remember something like that. Yeah, he, he had disappeared pretty much entirely after his MSL win and came back a little bit when he joined a new team, And but he was kind of disappointing when he came back. So he never really... He came back on the grid, but he was kind of at the bottom of the grid, I guess. Okay. Yeah, we had something similar in uh, Warcraft 3. It was not really the same. We had a really, really good player. It was called Curlifos. And for some time, while well, he played and he was at the top of his game, he won everything, then just uh, left when inactive for about a year, came back and started to win tournaments straight away once again. So uh, that was really, really nice. So Paul has to prove in StarCraft 2 that he's able to uh, succeed as well. Apparently a really accomplished StarCraft Broodwar player. I have to admit that I didn't play Broodwar myself. I was more uh, stuck with the Warcraft 3. And this TVT right now, we have, as Moldrop already mentioned, both these players with uh, early expansions, something that he can get away with on Daybreak quite easily. Finnis now starts swapping between the factory and the barracks, trying to get Hellions, and already has a starport on the way and getting a tech left, so this looks really interesting. I'm not quite wow, sure if yeah. he's going to get an Amity back and trying to drop, or if he's switching right away and uh, just goes for the Banshee play. I, I think he's going to switch it, because he's got the yeah. Barracks building a Tech Lab right next to the Starport. The Probably. timing is actually going to be perfect that the Tech Lab finishes just before the Starport does. So I'd imagine that's what's going to happen. We're going to find out in yep. moments. There he is switching it up. And he's getting out, yeah, Reactor Hellions. So he's just starting to pump out lots of Hellions here. This is going to be a really interesting Push and Pult has nothing but Marines right now. Getting Cloak as well, by the way. So we have a lot of Marines for Pult. Pult actually acti uh, adding two reactors to his barracks. Getting a factory at the same time. We already have four Hellions for Finn. And now with the first Banshee on its way and Cloak as well. I'm actually not too sure if he's able to deal a lot of damage with that. Oh, wow. This could actually... If he pulls this off, this could be super effective. Think about this. He's got Hellions. He goes in, he can soften up those Marines with lots of Hellion fire, oh, and look then at that. come in with the Banshees. Oh, look and Blue Flame being upgraded now. Oh, I like that. I really, really like that. Oh, wow, here he is. He's poking with these Hellions. He's not being too safe with them, but he's softening up those Marines so that when the Banshees come in, the, Hellion, the Marine count will be lower and the Marines will be weaker, despite having combat shields. And Paul doesn't have any idea what's happening right now. He had a scan going off in the main base of Finn, but he didn't scan. He didn't scan that starport and uh, didn't see those Banshees. Once again, the Hellions go for a little bit of an attack. And Moltrap, you are perfectly right. That could hurt a lot. The Banshee arriving in the main base of Paul and starting to pick at the SMEs. Look at that. Now he comes down to the micro. There's the cloak. Missile turret being built immediately, but he's losing so many SMEs already. Wow, lots of SCVs going down. And let me just double check on that Banshee. We have seven kills, up to eight now. And the Marines are coming in. He's going to scan. He has a scan ready. He's got almost two scans ready, but he doesn't scan. Wow, that Banshee. And oh. Wasting the scan, losing so many units. 11 kills already on that Banshee. Finn. Wow. wow. This is doing really, really, this is really effective. Holt has, he lost a lot of Marines to those Hellions, and so now he doesn't quite have the count he needs to really scare off his Banshee. Going to work on the reactor. It looks like two medevacs are going to get out before the reactor dies. And I guess the Banshee will be able to uh, kill another Marine. Yep, no. That should be it. Is he really getting away with that again? Yep. Nice micro buy, Finn with that Banshee. And in the background, Finn has not been just microing, and this is 
you know, I kind of got a little bit overboard on my Brood War fanboys in last last time, but you know what? If you can play Brood War at that highest level, it requires you to do so much multitasking. So Finn, at the same time, has been continuing to make units and mackering up and uh, switching around his buildings, getting more tech. He's got a Raven out now and got the Blue Flame upgrade as well. Of course, Polt is, is actually very good at macro as well, so I don't want to discount that. But truth be told, looking at that army composition, Finn is in a really nice position against his opponent's units with all those blue flame hellions and the tanks in the back. And look at oh. that! Oh. <laughs> wow! Baited by the Banshees, oh. he stims his marines into blue flame hellion fire. Wow. Loses a few. The medevac's helping out a lot though. Oh, he does not want to get clumped up on that ramp. He will lose all of his marines if he does. Damn, that guy is good. Look at that. Finn with 113 supply against 95 right now. He, oh geez. He is playing this really, really well. And he's got this air army with two Banshees, two Vikings, and a Raven, but he also has these Blue Flame Hellions and tanks on the ground. He has, does not have Siege Mode yet, though. It's just started recently. I really love that play by that guy. Look at that. Yep, and both is just going for a sheer bio as well, which is not going to be very effective because once Finn gets Siege Mode, he's going to have about six, no, he's going to have about eight tanks with Siege Mode, six to eight tanks with Siege Mode. That is going to be really hard to stop with just a bio army, especially a marine heavy army for Polk. And now he's moving out, he has a fair amount of Vikings, he has those Banshees, was able to save both of them in the early stage of the game. And once again the Marines encountering the Blue Flame Hellions and the tanks in the back, wow! Paul is losing so much stuff, he's down to 108 supply, being chased down by the Hellions, look at that! And losing the all, as well. all of the Marines! Oh, he needs to be careful, he doesn't lose these tanks though! He turns around, oh, point defense drone saving! The tank from the bed, from, sorry, from the Marauder fire, and Polt is just getting picked apart here. Finn's supply continues to climb whilst Polt's stays about the same. And Finn definitely has his opponent on the ropes right now. The two Banshees with all those, with all those Vikings are controlling the air battle. And there's just no way that he can keep those Medivacs alive. There he goes again, sieging up this time, baiting his opponent. Wow, wow. And so he, much pressure. Yeah, he's trying to, you know, stim his units. He's forced to stim to deal with this, but the medevacs are just getting picked off by Vikings. So the stimming is hurting his units, softening them up for these blue flame aliens. This is just a perfect combination of units and tactics coming from Finn. I have, I admitted it before, I didn't know for GG before those games that we cast the last time, but man, I have to tell you, I'm already a fan. <laughs> Yep, he has Colt pinned in here now. Colt, and that's the thing, he doesn't really have anything coming to deal with this. You know, if he had siege mode on the way and he had a couple tanks out, I might think he might be able to hold this off, but I don't know what he could possibly pull out. He's gonna have to go for one final defense. Nah, he's trying to keep and here it is, the he's stepping in, trying to kill off these tanks as quickly as possible. The Marauder's no. going to work for the point defense drone, blocking some of the fire of the Hellions. Blocking as well, and the tanks in the background obliterating everything. The Blue Flame Hellions can now just polish off the Marines the and... The Vikings! Look at wow. the Vikings! Even using the Vikings to take him apart, down to 74 supply. 132 for Finn, getting tanks, getting Blue Flame Hellions. Those Banshees are still alive, and they have a lot of kills. So 20 kills for one of the Banshees. Yeah, this is pretty much over. We're going to see GG in just a moment here. Colt, he made his last stand, and I guess he's going to make one more last last stand, but... Oh, God, that oh, SCVs. Ouch, yeah. Oh, this, <laughs> Finn is getting two, two command centers at the same time. Yeah, well, he certainly can afford it. He has a lot of excess minerals, by the way. 1,400. Yeah. He's about to double the supply of his opponent and still putting pressure onto the expansion of Polt. He's not frog leaping forward with all those tanks, by the way. He could be a little bit more aggressive right now, yeah. focusing on the Banshees, I guess. 
just being slow and steady about this. He knows he's got it in the bag. Oh, God. Overcommit. <laughs> and that was all of Bolt's SCBs. <laughs> wow. Lighting them up for the Hell Yes, and then it only takes one shot from all of them, and suddenly, like, a boom! All the SCBs are gone 38 at a time. Oh, wow. And uh, this one little drop is definitely pulled to last attempt. Once this drop fails, it's going to be definitely GG. And it's going to do a little bit of damage here, but Finn is just going to fight it off with his SCBs and some reinforcements. And he gets bottled in a corner, and the Vikings are going to take down the Medivacs. The drop is going to be cleaned up by Hellions and a tank. Did kill 16 of both workers, but that's about it. He doesn't have any answer for this. I mean, Finn is now tripling the supply of hold. GG. GG. Wow. Well, um, <laughs> I don't know what to say. That guy's good. He is incredibly good. Wow. What song is that? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I, I really like that tactic by uh, Finn. Again, going back, he had a really cool combination of strategies there. He went for the Hellions to start off with and then transitioned to the Banshees. And the Marines were softened up by the Hellions, so they couldn't do as well against the Banshee. You know, a lot, even though he had combat shields, because of the damage from the Hellions, the Marines only took one or two hits instead of three to kill from the Banshees. And regardless, he also just didn't really micro very well with the Marines against the Banshees either. He he used two scans and didn't kill a single Banshee, so um, wasn't too effective with that. And uh, the follow-up of mass tanks and Hellions with Blue Flame, with Vikings and the Banshees and a Raven for point defense. That was pretty cool stuff. Bio was just not enough to deal with that. No, not at all. Yeah, and I'm sorry for the, for the laugh just, but uh, <laughs> Korean gangsta hip-hop is just a little bit too weird. The only thing I can think of is maybe if, if Polt had somehow gotten air control and gotten Vikings out at the same time and been able to deal with the Banshees and, and the, you know, the Raven. Yeah, maybe just one Banshee. The Medivacs would have been safer. Sorry, maybe just one uh, one Viking in order to defend up the Banshee play, but you already mentioned it. He didn't all do well with those Marines, and I mean, 11 kills with the first Banshee. That shouldn't happen when you have two com oh, orbital commands. Yeah. Uh, Taldor yeah. Malta, by the way, will be the next map in this Terran versus Terran. Uh, the second attempt of Paul to defeat Finn. The game was about to start, and I'm really, really eager to see the next match. Will Finn be able to? Sorry, will Paul be able to come back into the special series? We're gonna find out.